is uh, the Arsenal side. They make one change from the one that beat Spurs yesterday. The former Stoke defender, Steve Bold, gets his first real public airing in an Arsenal shirt. He replaces David O'Leary in defence, who's got the slightest twinge on a leg injury. Exciting form by Arsenal, inspired down the flanks by David Rowcastle and Brian Marwood. I think there's a lot to look forward to this afternoon. Bayern, who were unhappy with their form yesterday, when they lost to Milan, they made four changes, and to add to the cosmopolitan feel to the whole thing, they introduced a 21-year-old Erlen Johnson, signed from the Norwegian club Moss in the summer. Well, there's Brian Marwood, almost a forgotten man in the midst of all the huge transfers this summer. He certainly reminded us of his talent with those two goals against Spurs yesterday. And big Steve Bold, six foot three of him, another George Graham signing who's gone about his business quietly. And a real test for him here at Wembley against Bayern Munich. Referee is Keith Hackett of Sheffield, soon on his way to the Seoul Olympics and whistling the start of this fourth game in the Wembley International Festival. Bayern Munich in the all red strip, back in the goal to This is Argentala plays such a, an important role at the centre of the Bayern defence as he did against Milan yesterday. Flugler, and now Paul Davis. They were so sparkling in their form yesterday, Arsenal, but they need just a victory here now to be uh, sure of winning the festival trophy. Paul Merson, who uh, been on the score sheet again, he's had a terrific pre-season, scored a hat-trick in Sweden, and got the first goal against Spurs yesterday. Young Johnson, the uh, Norwegian, he played against the Republic of Ireland just before the European Championship in Oslo as a central defender and looked really impressive, only 21. This is Armin Ek. To Johnny Ekstrom, Swedish World Cup player. Ian St. John with me again. With Brian and uh, Arsenal starting with a lot of determination. Uh, a couple of the German players already are looking at the referee and asking him, uh, you know, what's going on here? Is this a friendly match? Well, it was certainly uh, Bayern Munich against Milan yesterday, which you may have caught live on ITV. It was skillful, certainly, but it was languid almost to the point of tedium at points. But Milan showed some good stuff today, and we've got Flugler getting his own back there. And the Arsenal player, Alan Smith. Milan was certainly drawn out by uh, the pace of Tottenham in the first game this afternoon and Bayern themselves I think realised that they've got to up the uh, tempo a good deal uh, to counteract Arsenal uh, and they were really impressed with the Gunners yesterday. Alan Smith also on the score sheet yesterday against Spurs as indeed he was 16 times for Arsenal last season he was their top scorer. Graham and on the left of the picture the Bayern Munich manager Jupp Heinkes, the 43 year old former striker. David Rocastle. Three of those four Arsenal goals came directly from his work down that right flank. Two of them scored by the man chasing it there, the number 11, Brian Marwood. Arsenal, as you will have seen, in a very snazzy change strip of yellow and dark blue. He will really grow in stature as the seasons go by. He had a terrific last season for Arsenal. Such a competitive uh, midfield player. A throw then to Bayern Munich. Just reminding you of their enormous pedigree. They've, uh, in the last ten seasons, have been West German champions five times and in those ten seasons have never been out uh, beyond fourth position. This is Johnson. Straight to Rowcastle. Now it's played to Wegman. Davis, Rowcastle, Smith. Good play here. Rowcastle for... Well, it stayed in play, but uh, Keith Hackett, sadly for Arsenal, didn't play an advantage. Saw an infringement, and the free kick will be taken, and every red shirt now is back behind the ball. 
Steve Dixon. George Graham very impressed with the form of uh, both his full-backs yesterday. This is Merson. Real Castle. That's a good waspish cross there. Smith there and Davis almost on the end of it. Winterburn looking to pile it in there again. Here's little Marwood on the far side. A deep cross from him before, towards Merson. Off him for a goal kick to Bayern Munich. scored five times. Place Mateus in the midfield for Bayern Munich, who's gone on to Italy. This is Wegmann picking up Nachvai on the far side. Fullback, as we saw yesterday, who enjoys getting forward in amongst the uh, attacking action. And certainly already you get the feeling of a more positive attitude and a quicker pace about Bayern Munich this afternoon. Uh, trainer Jürgen Plankers was very disappointed with their performance yesterday. But it is a young side, it's in a transitional period. He's got five or six newcomers into the side. He's lost three or four really established players. And it's a question of a bedding down process now, as Eck now takes this free kick. Oh, Dixon went for it, didn't quite get a touch. Lukic kept his eye faithfully on the ball. Just three back for Bayern, two up for Arsenal. Merson and Smith getting some support from the midfield now with Michael Thomas. He might try something from this range. Defensively, the Germans play a different game from uh, the Italians, and it's, it's quite uh, clear here, you know, because Augen Thaler always plays as a sweeper. He's always the, the last man at the back there. But his Italians played flat, didn't they? And uh, it, it was entertaining, I felt, for them. But the Germans, you're very rarely offside because of that, playing against German sides. And, uh, you know, if the Arsenal could play some cute little balls in the spaces either side of them, they just might catch them out today. Good to see Michael Thomas making that break from the midfield. That also was one of the virtues of AC Milan over these last two days, the way they got their midfield men into good scoring positions. Well, George Graham, we were, we were chatting before the game to George, and that's what impressed him, you know, the, the amount of players they can get forward uh, when they start an attack. This is Argentala. Number eight is Reuter. Fine with a long ball forward. Dixon getting it back quite comfortably. Under a little bit of pressure there for Nick. Thomas. Winterburn. Adams. Of pre-season stamina for all the sides playing here. 
Arsenal continue with a game, two games in midweek, away to Birmingham City and away to Leicester City. It's Winterburn with the throw for Arsenal. It's a good long throw there towards Alan Smith. Taken away by Johnson. Now with the long clearance, Stephen Bold. And that was confident enough under a little bit of pressure from the Swedish star Johnny Extra. Good jump by Johnson. Smith, cleared by Eck. This is Bold again. George Graham was saying a little earlier uh, to us, Ian, we should, we should watch Stephen Bold. He may well remind us of Gary Pallister. Uh -huh. George was saying that uh, he's very tidy on the floor for a big fella. Uh, good defender, but also you know, good feet as well. into Paul Davis. A space on the far side for Brian Marwood if he can find him. Stopped though by the number 10 or left Ton. Winterburn. A prolific scorer in his playing days with Borussia Mönchengladbach. Second from the left, Uli Hoeneß, a former Bayern star, of course now the general manager of the club. A throw then to Bayern. Reuter. An offside has been given. Uh, the linesman had his flag up. I really can't see that. I mean, the ball, the ball is still in the defending half of the field. And the linesman's put his flag up with somebody 20 yards inside the other half. Adams then with the kick for Arsenal. Towards Smith, having his shirt tugged there by Johnson. Smith again picking up Marwood on the far side as the sun comes out at Wembley. Marwood's cross. Thomas putting it back in again. If you weren't watching yesterday uh, with us, you might wonder at the bare patches on the uh, famous Wembley turf, the ravages of the Michael Jackson concerts, and the uh, American football, of course, have seen to that. But it's a good flat pitch, cutting up just a little bit. It's by no means a bad pitch, not quite in the true Wembley traditions. Stefan Reuter signed in the summer from Nuremberg. Rowcastle. Nothing yet really to get the Arsenal fans cheering as the uh, Arsenal team's performance did yesterday against the oldest rivals, Tottenham. It's not as open a game, obviously, by as yesterday. Uh, the Germans are all working hard, they're all getting behind the ball. They've obviously had a a little meeting about yesterday's performance and uh, maybe they're all playing for places. Well, here's Extra. He'll be back here again in October playing for Sweden against England in the World Cup. It's a true to Wegman, back towards Extra again, but Winterburn for Arsenal. Eck. 
tried there for Flugler, but a poor pass, and it'll be a throw to Arsenal. Coming up to a quarter of an hour of the first half gone, nil-nil the score, Johnny Ekstrom, joined uh, Bayern Munich from the Italian club Empoli when they were relegated to the second division at the end of last season. For here, really, Arsenal now with a needing a victory to be sure of uh, taking the trophy, and with it, sixty thousand pounds. Second club get thirty thousand. Extra playing it now to Nakbai. Too high for Eck, and it'll be Lee Dixon, who's settled in really well since his transfer from Stoke City back in January. Clearly back to uh, Raymond Alman. Alcantara. Eck. Johnson. Eck. Flugler. And his Eck again. Both going out to uh, meet him. side, Nachbar originated from East Germany, then came across to the west to play for Bayern. Reuter, new player from Nuremberg. Bayer Schmidt. And able to get to that, he can't, it's a goal. Also uh, in the box with us today, Trevor Francis, welcome Trevor. Your impressions so far? Yes, I think that Arsenal are finding little problems this afternoon because uh, whereas yesterday against Tottenham they gave a lot of space, today the Germans are marking them very tightly and probably the two match winners yesterday were the two wide boys, Marwood and uh, Rowcastle. And the Germans are not giving them an inch this afternoon. It's up to Arsenal to try and release these boys. Well, we should watch for that. With the likes of Paul Davis and uh, Michael Thomas from the midfield making those passes that release Rowcastle and Brian Marwood. Flugler. This is Eck. A little bit of space there for him to measure up across. Ekstrom's waiting in the middle. And a good jump by uh, Steve Bold. Six foot three of him. Use that height to good effect. Meyer Schmidt to Reuter. And Marwood on the far side. For the Arsenal's throw, Winterburn will take it. Ball Merson. Free kick to Arsenal. Marwood will take it. Both Tony Adams and uh, Steve Bold have gone forward. Two big strapping six footers in there, being very closely marked, as you can see. Arsenal are breaking towards the ball, and it almost came through to Bold. The flag had gone up for an offside. The yeah, Arsenal scored a lot of goals last year, Brian, uh, from set pieces. And uh, as you can see, that they, they are a bit different when they line up. They do things that uh, upset the defending sides. And Steve Bold will be an added addition because uh, I mean, he is a big fellow, good in the air. And I would expect him to get on the, the score sheet a few times this year. Amazing uh, championship record that I was telling you about a bit earlier. They've won the league ten times, the cup eight times, the European Cup in 74, 75 and 76, I seem to remember, the Cup Winners' Cup in 67. I'm sure any Villa fans watching remember also that Aston Villa beat them in a European Cup final. 
Here's Bold. Eight times they've won the league, the FA Cup five times, and the UEFA Cup back in 1970, beating Anderlecht in the final round. Off goes Nakvai. Now oh, we're playing it into Smith, a little touch by him, didn't pick up Merson. Norman Tyler also couldn't pick it up. But away come Reuter. Flugler. He's got Bateman outside him. Oh, it was almost hit into the uh, path of the German forward by Paul Davis. And then no harm was done. And the ball thrown out by Lukic to Winterborn. On for Marwood. The score 0 0 with 20 minutes of the game ball. Offside against Smith. Always playing at Wembley, scored in the Littlewoods final. And scored one of the goals yesterday against Spurs. Johnson gets it back. fans to bite on at all Ian is there and uh, I think the Spurs fans who've stayed on are hoping obviously and uh, getting behind Bayern Munich as best they can they'd like to see <laughs> them put it across Arsenal <laughs> they certainly are they're, they're chatting by um, but the Arsenal players look to me to be a bit heavy legged maybe they're feeling the effects of yesterday's game you know we keep saying it two games in two days it really is uh, hard work for the players and they certainly don't have the sparkle they had yesterday Although I thought Spurs in their game against Milan seemed to get better the longer that game went on. They certainly did. That, that is a fact. That is a fact. But at the moment, you, you must admit that uh, the Arsenal just look as if they're plodding around here. That's right. Well, Davis. Chip forward towards Smith. Knocks it down again. And Bold is right in there. That could have been a spectacular opener on his first real big date for Arsenal. Nicely knocked down by Smith. He's not the firmest of favourites with the Arsenal fans, is uh, Alan Smith, but he does get some very good knockdowns in that sort of situation there, and Bold was following up. I'm just thinking uh, to ask Trevor here, uh, he played yesterday afternoon. Uh, how would your fans be playing again today, Trevor? I was just going to say, Ian, that uh, the way my legs are feeling at the moment, I wouldn't fancy playing two games in two days. Just look at the Arsenal lads, really. The big one for them was yesterday against Spurs. They got themselves G'd up for that one. They're just a little bit flat at the moment. What they need is a goal, just to give them a little bit of a, bit of a uh, buzz, just to get them going again. I think we could all echo that, Trevor. Argentala. Argentala again taking it from Reuter. Played it nicely now for Eck. Got Fagman outside him and here's Ekstrom. Still not away yet. Jürgen Wegman. Flugler. Meyer Schmidt. Okay. It is that Trevor. A lot of people will be saying that close season is so short is it possible to lose that amount of fitness you know between shall we say may and certainly so far as a lot of players are concerned june with the european championships and tours and now oh yes i think if you leave off training for uh, at least two weeks uh, you do lose your fitness but um, what supporters have to remember is that these players here have been training very very hard every day and they're not really preparing for this tournament they're preparing for two weeks from now I went into the game yesterday and uh, I've been training hard all, all week and really the preparation for a game like yesterday wasn't right for me being a player that relies on uh, sharpness and speed off the mark. 
you know, I've got a peak in two weeks' time, not for yesterday's game. Good point. Here's Alan Smith. Arsenal come forward again in the yellow shots, 0-0 against Bayern Munich in the red. Here's David Rowcastle. Gets past one, almost forces his way past another, can't quite get the ball through to Marwood, and here comes Bayern, no, big and lost out there, bold. Standing big and strong there as a central defender alongside Tony Adams. Adams' is ball long towards Smith, he's got Marwood sneaking up inside, Smith shots, charged away. Here's Flugler. <laughs> Reuter stopped by Thomas, releases Marwood. Smith waiting in the middle, Merson's in there too, for a cross. Yesterday against Tottenham, he was twinkling it down that left, and uh, there's a bit of confidence for you. Howard was twinkling down that left and uh, causing Spurs all sorts of problems. Not only that, he was getting in some devastating crosses. Agantala. Schmidt to uh, Akvai. Again, that long ball played towards Eck. Some good defending, though, by uh, Lee Dixon, and Bold gets it back to Lukic. Just over 27,000 here at Wembley today. Just over 30,000 yesterday. Getting close to 60,000 over the two days, and whatever anybody says, that's a bad haul for a pre-season tournament and just about I gather reaches uh, Wembley's break-even point I hope we'll make this an annual event just missed out there Thomas trying to get uh, Paul Davis away Rowcastle supporting him Smith's away on the far side, Merson also on the far side, still Rokos the shot, charged down though by Alvin Tala, and suddenly the break is on for Bayern. This is Armin Ek Ekstrom, the flag is up. So Arsenal's offside, trap work there as uh, Johnny Ekstrom was caught in it. Both he and uh, Olaf Ton were substituted yesterday Lee Dixon then with the free kick for Arsenal and now a flag up for an offside against Mercer Nice ball play now to the fullback Fluger. Ekstrom's waiting in the middle. Bateman on the far side for him, and it came off uh, Michael Thomas for the Bayern Munich ball. Spurs fans cheering on Bayern. No corner. Help this man well. He might cause Bobby Robson's team all sorts of problems in October. Johnny Ekstrom, 23 year old Swede. Terrific goal scorer. Lukic didn't get to that one. Alcantara tries an overhead. I think a couple of the Bayern players got in each other's way when that looked quite inviting. Yeah. The referee has given a, a foul for pushing that. I don't know who the 
who was pushing who there. Certainly nobody touched the goalkeeper. John Lukic. Smith preparing to leap, but it was more finely judged by Johnson. Tony Adams. John Lukic, who played all 52 games last season for Arsenal. First goal in Bayern Munich, if you've just joined us, in the all-red strip. Arsenal in yellow and blue. Reuter. Ryan Schmidt. No nonsense challenge there from Rowcastle. Marwood outside. Support from Davis and from Winterburn. Swift challenging there. That was Olaf Ton getting in a couple of times, but still Arsenal got the better of him. A lovely ball played by Thomas for Winterburn to try and get it on that trusting left boot. And Arsenal get a corner. Once again, Bold is there, and Adams is not far behind. Marwood, who stands five foot seven, can be used to take the corner. Try to get that little flick on at the near post. Davis tried to get in there. Bold also trying to get in there. There's plenty of boots and boys. But in the end, it's Bayern who get it away. <laughs> Certainly a sharper edge about Bayern in their tackling and their whole approach to the game than there was in their defeat against AC Milan yesterday. And Arsenal are finding it difficult, but here's Smith. Rowcastle, good cross coming in again. Marwood on the far side, but beaten in the air by Extra Mood, come back to help out. No, it was Reuter. Tom is down for a moment. And signed for a million pounds in the summer. Paul Davis. Or left Tom, who's still on the ground. And Tom, but Davis, if the present uh, market volume is Davis would go for a million pounds. George Graham has uh, stuck well clear of uh, the real high price things, hasn't he? Although, of course, he did put in a, a bid for Tony Cotty. But he's made some good buys nonetheless, two, two of which are playing here today the, in defence. Bold and Dixon. That's correct. Ryan Schmidt. Eck. Delightful ball played there. To the fullback, Flugler. Extra waiting in the middle. What a terrible cross. And he uh, probably caught the annoyance. Uh, gesture of Hans Flugler delightfully put away and plenty of time to make a good accurate cross to men who were waiting but it's a corner for Bayern Munich and it was Flugler's header over the top goal kick Still could play there by Bayern Munich. Oh, in 
the end, they were let down by Vagman. But there was so little space down there, Ian, wasn't there? And uh, they got themselves under that corner so well. Delightful football. In fact, they were let down by the pitch man. There was a big divot there, and the ball just bobbled off it. But that was lovely football. Akai with their throw. Argentala, who's marshalling this defence so well. Alongside him, the young Norwegian. Johnson. Quite impressed with the Johnson. Uh, and of course, Scotland play the in, in the World Cup, so Indeed. I'll have to send the report up yes. to Andy Locksbury. Well, I think Jack Charlton would say that he was very useful when they played against the Republic of Ireland in Oslo just before the European Championships. There's a long shot. Bash <laughs> way off the target. Sargon Tyler, who's had 13 seasons at Bayern. 14 caps for his country. I've never seen him play a bad game, uh, Argon Tyler. Every time I've watched him, he's played well. Have you ever played against him, Trevor? I'm not sure, certainly not for uh, his club team, Bayern, but um, possibly with the national team, yes. Uh, it's interesting looking at him that uh, going back to the West German European Championship team, uh, where well, they struggled at the back, didn't they? Um, yes, Ergut, Ergut, the uh, sweeper, lost his place in the end, didn't he? And uh, it's, it's a wonder. He's played in. He's had a few international games. They've had a good look at him. He's played 14 times for West Germany. He's certainly better than uh, the players they had in the European Championship. That's for sure. Maybe his face doesn't fit. Who knows? There's Johnson again going for this one, again judged it perfectly, beating Merson in the air. Ekstrom's up there as well. Here's Tome. Now Reuter. Adams. Smith couldn't gather. Oh, very nearly fell for Rowcastle. Mackfy just getting there. And finding Flugler. Here's Eck. Hit inside there for Bayer Schmidt. It's a Bayern ball. And away goes Olaf to. Into the path of Eck. Bayer Schmidt. Johnson. Ball swept there by Flugler to Reuter. Schmidt. Again, it's Reuter. And forced back by Merson. Forced all the way back in the end to a very negative piece of play to Raymond Armour. Wanting a bit of action now, and I don't blame them. Well, maybe they'll get it. Smith, finding Harwood. Winterburn going outside. Cross is not good enough. Merson trying to make something of it. It'll fall for turn. And now back for now. also it'll come for Michael Thomas so the uh, momentum can be maintained but that was a poor cross easily nodded away by Eck Bold. Dixon Smith 
looked so sharp in and around the penalty area yesterday, and that's all deserted them today. Yes. They just can't deliver a, a good final ball. It's all lead boots today, isn't it? You know, they're all around. I think David Rocastle, I've been watching him, and uh, I mean, he looks very tired. He looks very lethargic. Lesson now. Thomas. Well, here is Rocastle. finds Marwood, hit across the face of the goal and Smith was coming in, Thomas is still in there, the flag is up now for an offside. Just reiterating what I was saying before here about um, tired legs, it's players like Rodecastle and Marwood who are possibly going to suffer more than the others because they do rely on the sharpness and with all the training they've been doing recently it's, uh, it's the boys perhaps who have got the, the greatest stamina who are going to show more today. That is very true. You know, there's a lot, there's some players can uh, fight their way through it at training and, and two games, no problem to them. Where others, you know, as you see, the wingers yesterday had, had so much of the ball and it was sparkling and it was so lively and it was very entertaining. Whereas today, I mean, both of them, I mean, especially uh, David Rocastle, they're looking very heavy legged. It'll be interesting actually to hear what George Graham's got to say to the boys half time because he realises that uh, there's a lot of tired legs out there but I think he'll possibly have to use a little bit of psychology and tell them that it's all in the mind. Yeah, the players have said it's all in the legs. The, the last attack they had there, Brian, I thought that... Uh, well, that's the, the, the foul there. Was nothing there. The last attack, uh, I thought, was pretty good when Marwood lifted the ball to the far post. And I always find against German teams that that kind of ball there causes a lot of problems for them. And I think that Farsal could get a few balls in like that. And they may get a bit of joy. Johnson, the long ball to the right-hand side. Stefan Reuter there, but here's Nigel Winterburn. Marwood again, very deep indeed, playing that long ball forward towards Merson. Again, it's Winterburn. Back by Avantala. minutes of the first half remaining. It's a fairly breezy afternoon and some fairly black clouds are around Wembley now. You get the feeling that maybe a good heavy shower would uh, sharpen the pitch up a little bit as well, which might help matters. The ball would move that a bit more sweetly. Ekstrom trying to get there, Bold, who's hardly put a foot wrong in his first real big game for Arsenal. Got there first. Just a little touch there by Mankai. Bateman couldn't collect. Marwood. Dummy. In the end, Paul Davis back to his goal. Dixon. Great castle. Thomas. Merson. He's lost it. Meyer Schmidt. Johnny Ekstrom. It's a nice little play there. By the number 10 Ton. Trying to get Ekstrom on his way. It's again with Rowcastle and now Dixon. Two minutes of the first half left now. Certainly wouldn't recognise this Arsenal side from the one that performed with such freshness, and that maybe is the point, and such skill. As they showed against Tottenham yesterday, there's the long ball forward again by Bayern Munich, Tony Adams. Cutting it out very well indeed, finding Brian Marwood. Away go Arsenal now down that left flank. Three waiting in the middle. Let's see if he can uh, serve a better ball in this time. It finds Alan Smith. Uh, that was fairly laborious, but in the end, it was a foul by Tone, so it gives Arsenal the free kick. 
Roadcastle wanting to take it quickly and sought to get Dixon away down the flank there, but a good piece of play by Eck, and at the end it releases uh, extra. Nack fly the full back, here he is again. Johnny Ekstrom. And Adams winning that challenge quite conclusively. It could well be a challenge that's repeated when the two sides meet in the World Cup qualifier here in October. In the meantime, it's Paul Davis. And now here's Lee Dixon. Maybe Arsenal could produce something right at half time. Cross comes in, Smith with a header. something a little better than that these two got on target with it in St John well that was a good ball in and uh, if we could have a look at it again you could you could see that uh, he was plumb in front of goals and all he needed was really a good connection it's a lot of time as we reach time added on at the end of the first half Alventala breaking forward Here's Ek. Might be some space for him to have a pot of goal. And Lukic turning it away, but no time for the corner to be taken. The half time whistle is gone. In truth, overall, a fairly disappointing first half. But maybe the second half will pick up a little bit. And the half time interval brings the score here at Wembley Stadium in this Wembley International Trophy. Between Arsenal and Bayern, Arsenal nil, Bayern Munich nil. And welcome back to Wembley. Where Arsenal know that a victory here will give them the uh, trophy outright in this first Wembley international tournament. Having beaten Spurs yesterday. Rocastle. Merson on the far side. in the opening second of the second half. Mason and Anna, of course, having won their two games. Arsenal would need to uh, win here, as they did yesterday, and, of course, the thumping 4-0 win yesterday gives them a better goal difference, which would just edge them ahead. But first, they've got to break down this Bayern Munich defence. Here's their corner, taken by Brian Marwood. Oh, with a header. But he must have pushed down on a Bayern player. Was it an offside? No, it was an offside, signalled by uh, Joe Worrell. And a free kick to Bayern. for West Germany in one of their European Championship games. Free kick to Bayern. They'll be bringing it back to Germany immediately after this game. Eck and Tone are around this one. And it's Tone who plays it to Armin Eck. Tone's gone away down the left, but that's more as a decoy. Wegman was in there looking for a header. And Winterburn onto the left boot, gets it away to Marwood, and then finally clear to Alan Smith. <laughs> Marwood. Takes a shove from Reuter, but stays firmly on the ball, and finds Lee Dixon. Merson. Castle. Again, trying to play the ball in, but it's Johnson who gets it back to Raymond Harmon. Taking over from the Belgian international, Jean-Marie Pfaff, who was due to be playing for Las Palmas, but apparently that transfer has fallen through at the moment. So Norbert Nackfa. East German with the throw. Bayer Schmidt, Willy Bayer Schmidt. Dixon, but doesn't get to the ball. Flugler playing it in again. 
is bold who stooped low and directed a good header now for Rocastle. Smith away on the right flank for him, giving support. Good play there by Smith. Gang Rocastle, delightful ball by him now for Michael Thomas. Merson's waiting in the middle. Oh, couldn't quite get to it. And Arsenal really within a whisker of getting the important goal early in the second half that this game so badly needs. And it was a delightful move right the way through there. Thomas's ball through there. Merson just a fraction away from it. Actually, I think he had to try the short line and uh, had he played a square pass then Merson has only got a tap in, but he had a shot, missed kick completely, and the pace of the ball just took it past Merson. But a real quality move, and maybe the first one uh, that Arsenal have been able to put together that, uh, that led up to that chance. That's correct. In the meantime, it's Bayern Munich coming back again. Maybe that's the harbinger of better things in this second half. Augenthal. No problems there for Lukic. The ball must have just clipped off the Arsenal defender. There's Keith Hackett signalling a corner. Arminek with the corner for Bayern Munich. Hill there, cleared by Dixon, no nonsense about that one. And a battle going on there between Thomas and Tone. And Thomas... Whether it's at Rokas, who's just a little too ferocious in his challenge there. Trevor? Just returning to that uh, move that's now by the Arsenal, that was uh, in instrumental, was Rokas in that move. And, uh, He's a player that impressed me very much last season and uh, I fully expect him to break into the England full squad this season. I think that's just a matter of time, don't you? I would hope so. Davis. Bold. Adams. Smith. Play again, bringing in... Oh! A free kick there. A cynical piece of... Charging there, body checking by Norbert Nakvai. How about that? Ball's long since gone, just look at that. But that's one of the most annoying fouls in a football match when, when people do that blatant obstruction. So Marwood, let's see if the uh, Bayern team can be punished for that. Marwood playing it in. And the header, think my big goal. Quite easily taken though by Alman. He's really enjoying himself at Wembley's first appearance, and it will be the first time the Arsenal fans have uh, had a good look at him. And I would have thought what they've seen so far must impress them. He looks older than uh, 25, I guess. No disrespect to him, by that I mean he looks a very experienced player. And I've been watching him and pulling all the youngsters around him, you know, instructing them, and, and I think he's had a super game. Yes, he's obviously full of confidence. Doing his bit of shouting. And getting some good tackles in, some good headers, some good positional play. Michael Thomas now with a full mess. Made in the game for Thomas. He's got so much power in his running. But not enough to get past Alcantara. Free kick again to Arsenal. Pace has picked up a bit in the second half. Still with 0-0, the game in desperate need of an opening goal. Harwood with the cross. Harman collecting. Just watch the number of steps, particularly with Keith Hackett. The Germans should know that. There's a number of steps against the Italian goalkeeper in the opening uh, European Championship game when uh, Keith Hackett was the referee that led to the German equaliser. Scored, incidentally, by a, a Bayern Munich player at that time. Andy Bremer, who's now left for Inter Milan, along with uh, Mateus. And of course, bearing in mind they've also lost Mark Hughes back to Manchester United and Jean-Marie Pfaff, their goalkeeper. It is very much a rebuilding scene for Bayern Munich, but here's Thomas now for Arsenal. Sweeping it wide for Marwood. Winterburn's going outside him. There are men waiting in the middle. Amongst them, Bold, who looked, or rather Smith, who looked to be blatantly... Body check there. And 
also a little unfortunate not to get something out of that. Toe. Agatala. Reuter keeping it in play. Did it look a pen to you, possibly? I thought it was Flugler, uh, I think was the, the culprit there with the Germans, and yes, certainly had a hold of Smith and then uh, blocked his run. Trevor Francis, what do you feel? If Ian St. John thinks it's a penalty, I agree with him. <laughs> I just want to see a goal. <laughs> well, it's Dixon with the throw for Arsenal. Mercy. support up front Nakvai long long ball there oh, the game superbly by Lee Dixon more than that kept it in play and Rowcastle selling the little dummy finding himself an extra yard and also men unmarked on this side of the field but his pass was a poor one so it'll be a throw to Bayern Munich I think Roe Castle will be a little bit livelier in this half because he's playing over at the side of the dugout. <laughs> this managers all, always get the players going a bit on their side of the field. This is Flugler. To Eck, stopped by Dixon. Certainly riding his luck. Paul Davis. Bring it through to Smith. Catch again for Thomas. Oh, it's it this time, but there's Tony Adams. Roe Castle, delightful ball. With some nice skills by Roe Castle, but he will start in the end to Eck. Maya Schmidt. Merson. Now can Smith gallop onto this one? He can. He gets past one, but he doesn't get past Argentina. But it could be a throw to Arsenal. And certainly get the impression that it's a livelier second half. Much more ambition about Arsenal's play. And possibilities that go with it. a little excited there as uh, all the hard work had been done and he saw the possibilities that were opening up for him but he promises to have a terrific season for Arsenal Adams up well there's Dixon again it's hit back oh, just as well Lukic stands 6 foot 4 that would have cleared him otherwise sends Winterburn on his way Arsenal picking up a little bit now still nil-nil remember they need to win here to make sure of the trophy and the £60,000 first prize Thomas now but played just a little too hard by Davis Francis yeah it was good to see Dixon faced with a one against one situation actually committing himself and the determination the confidence to go past the player because I think in today's football there is a slight reluctance for players to go past the player well, here's Tony This uh, had been a you know a competitive game, say a European match. Then of course the referee would have to do something about this because the Germans have done that so often. I mean that is just again the same player, Mac Vine on that side of the field has done it twice. He'd have been off. He'd have been cautious with the first one. He'd been off for that one. I, I, I would have thought so. And, uh, Keith Hack has been very lenient with him. Well, Obviously, the, you know he feels that the game doesn't want it. Howard then with the free kick. 
Both it in once more. And Merson was first to it, annoyed with himself as he fell, felt that with a little more purchase on that ball, he would have glided it wide of Almond and into the corner of the Bayern net. Well, I've been mean, saying that if they get the ball in, I'm sure they can score goals in the, uh, the Arsenal, and that was another chance. So the, the few times they've got the ball in, Brian, they've, they've certainly got their heads to it, haven't they? Indeed. Argentina, Johnson, the young Norwegian. Long ball forward. Again, Steve Bold is there. Here come Arsenal now with Davis. Merson. Davis again. Inside is Winterburn. <laughs> Another obstruction. And Harwood, who's normally the gentlest of men, shows his frustration as uh, Olaf Tone stopped his progress there. And well, here Arsenal again. Merson. Good ball there, played for Thomas. Himself, Harwood couldn't turn it back. Am I right in saying, Brian, that there was no bookings at all in any of the other games we've had? No, oh, none yet. Do you feel maybe the referees have decided that uh, it's not worth booking people? I think that's probably what uh, their philosophy is, don't you? Yes, but I think uh, this game has gone a little bit. I mean, OK, they've trusted the players to play in the, in the, sort of the right spirit, but the Germans, you know, have been very cynical now, aren't they? And I think it's up to the referee to do something about it. improved second half has gone by and we still await the first goal Arsenal nil, Bayern Munich nil but possibility is beginning to open up now Avantara and certainly the incentive is there for Arsenal in particular having had that good win against Tottenham yesterday with their pre-season then by getting the scalp of one of the greatest sides in European football since the war, Bayern Munich. It's a real feather in their cap. But it's 0-0 at the moment. Here's Alcantara. So whistling from the crowd, they're far from happy with some of the German tactics over the last uh, five or ten minutes. And particularly the boos coming for Norbert Nackvai. Tone. There the booze again for the long German defender. And burn with a header. Thomas to Smith. Alcantara. Dixon gets it back. One of his back passes have been a little bit erratic. He's obviously got great confidence in John Lukic. Goes Tony Adams. <laughs> Johnson. Alcantara. going through George Graham's mind about substitutions. Two from five, remember, allowed. He's got forwards on the bench like uh, Perry Groves. Kevin Richardson, you can see at the back there. Niall Quinn, of course, as well. Martin Hayes. A couple of pairs of fresh legs might help. I would think George is personally thinking along those lines. I mean, uh, there's nothing to be lost by doing it. Up towards Ekstrom. Challenged by Adams. Here's Winterburn. Here's Michael Thomas. Bit of space ahead of him to get up ahead of steam. Smith anxious to get something as well, but it comes instead to Brian Marwood. 
Person, Winterburn, chipped in there. Avantala's header. Runs towards Tone. And then to Flugler. Avantala. Johnson. Arsenal throw. have had much the better of this second half. Oh, Thomas has made a great break. Smith is on the charge as well. Alcantara is going across there. Half checked his man. And Arsenal get a corner. But Michael Thomas, who was out of the picture, I think, had made an absolutely brilliant run from midfield. Some 30 or 40 yards, really supercharged effort. And if he could have, could have been found, then it would have... Uh, a marvellous gap and a chance for Arsenal. Corner instead, Marwood with it, floated towards the near post, Bold is in there, might be Stephen Bold trying to blast his way through. Dixon gets it back. <laughs> 25 minutes to go. Arsenal nil, Bayern Munich nil, if you've just joined us. Hold. It's the right sort of dilemma for George Graham when you think he's got Steve Bold and Tony Adams and David O'Leary, who performed really well yesterday and is back fully fit after some Achilles problems. Nice problem to have, Ryan, you know, three centre-backs. I just wonder, when you look at sort of the championship, though, and a lot will depend upon young Paul Merson, just what he can sustain over the course of a season, whether they might just not quite get enough goals. I would I would say that is the, the area that probably George is looking at. I think he's, he's sorted out defensively, but he's got to look at how he's going to get goals. I think midfield, he's, he's very good. I like Thomas in midfield. Terrific. He's a super player, yes. And good down the flanks, you see, now with Marwood as well as Rokas. I think the Arsenal fans might well have quite an enjoyable season at Highbury. Yep, we've got a good bunch of good lads here. In goes Winterburn. Here's Marwood. Also, and I think it's worth talking about Tottenham, who performed twice here, were beaten twice, and took an awful lot of stick from particularly the Arsenal fans, as you would expect. But really, it's basically a new side that Terry Venables is uh, putting together there, and it'll take a little time for it to bed down. Well, that is a fact, and, uh, you know, when, once the season gets underway, they are the important results. It's not really important to what happens here at Wembley over this weekend. But obviously, to, uh, Terry Venables has got to try and fit all these new players in to his system and get them going as quickly as possible. Uh, on the display yesterday and today, uh, obviously that it's not quite happened as yet, and uh, they looked a bit ragged. But I mean, it, it has quality. There is a bit of quality about the side, but they certainly didn't show it as a team. And my Oh, Adams lost out there, was supported and saved by Paul Davis. Now Winterburn. 
halfway through the second half. Still nil-nil. Marwood. Person. The fans would have preferred the little bit of advantage to have been played there, but in the end, as you can see, it comes to nothing. here with uh, Reuter leading it. Schmidt. Great man. And Adams getting it away. Ekstrom was just behind him. That would have been a certain goal had Adams failed. And Arsenal skipper still only 21, remember. Nachvai. Get a little one-two going, and Winterburn read it really well. Now the long ball, and away goes Merson, but he was only three yards inside the uh, iron half, but enough to be called offside. Substitution will shortly be made. And uh, they're bringing on uh, another striker, Volfart, of Bayern Munich, and taking off Johnny Exton. Arsenal bringing on Martin Hayes by the look of it. And Paul Merson going off. So there's uh, Roland Wolfhard, who played the full game uh, yesterday against Milan. And Martin Hayes, a fresh pair of legs on for Arsenal as Paul Merson goes off. Trevor Francis. Yes, I would think that Bayern Munich must be bitterly disappointed with the display of Ekstrom today up front. Um, just hope he plays as badly as that against England in a couple of months' time. I have to say, yesterday he was no better. I played against him a couple of times in Italy when he was with Empoli, and uh, he always looked very dangerous and uh, quite capable of scoring a goal, but today he looked totally disinterested. Well, here's Martin Hayes for Arsenal, who would be very interested in getting on the score sheet, and uh, Smith sweeping it now for Marwood. Away goes Winterburn on the outside of him. Thought about playing it inside of Marwood and had to change his mind. He gets it through to Winterburn in the end, but not how he intended. Thomas in giving good support. And the final ball was a poor one. And uh, Bayern very elegantly, I must say, got it away. Arsenal's throw, Lee Dixon with it. So warming up. I think it looks like Kevin Richardson on the far side. Got themselves into trouble now. Thomas might be able to finish it off. Smith's looking to get in there. And in the end, Meyer Schmidt shielded it behind at the expense of a corner. But an uncharacteristically clumsy piece of defensive play there by Bayern Munich. Arsenal now beginning to get the bit between their teeth. Harwood with the corner. Voted towards Tony Adams. On the corner. One two fairly rugged encounters in these corners come up, flicked on. Hayes trying to get it in there. And in the end, Smith will claim it. And Arsenal. It took a deflection after Smith hit it. But they will worry about that. The ball's in the back of the Bayern net and Arsenal in the lead. It looked as though Martin Hayes might have the chance there. And it finally came off the goalkeeper, but it goes down to Alan Smith. It was an almighty scramble and Martin Hayes, as you say, very much involved in that. In fact, Hayes ended up on the goal line when the ball went in the net. But again, it's Arsenal scoring off a set-piece by which they, they've done so often in the, the past season. Certainly loves this Wembley scene. Liverpool's Cup final goal, a goal yesterday, a goal today. And here come Arsenal again, this time with Marwood. Big rangy Smith alongside him. Michael Thomas once again making great support. Here he is. Wants a good cross, gets it. Martin Hayes on the far side. Almost came in for Smith once more. Much better now from Arsenal. Back only as far as Road Castle. Well, 
Okay. in years to come that won't matter Castle. Here's Davis. Pretty extravagant attempt to an overhead kick, but it might have come off. You never know. It could have wrong footed Arman, but it was a goal kick for the Francis. It's amazing what a goal can do for a team. I think you find there that uh, David Rocas has found an extra yard. We saw Paul Davis breaking forward into a good position, and Michael Thomas made some great runs all the second half. Marvellous stamina, Michael Thomas, and uh, we talk about Rilcastle earlier on being a possible candidate for the England team. I would think this boy also must have a good chance. I think we should get a very competitive last quarter of an hour. Bayern certainly won't want to go back with their tails between their legs with two defeats here. Free kick to Arsenal. Hayes. Nice control. He killed that beautifully. Finding Smith. Made a good ball in too. Johnson's trying to close down Smith. Here's Rokas available. Dixon available, hitting it early, but I don't think there are many yellow shirts on this side. And Arman makes sure that Margaret doesn't get in. Margaret wants the ball back quickly, as you can see. Arsenal feel that the game really has begun to swing their way, swing their way now. Winterburn. I think that combination down that side, uh, you know, Winterburn and uh, Marwood, once they get their act together, I think it could be quite dangerous. You know, a couple of times they did have it quite been on the same wavelength, but uh, both reading down the left hand side gives it gives the Arsenal a good attack. Davis knocked off the line by Eck. Another corner for Arsenal. set piece almost producing the goal and big bold at the near post the perfect and a flick on these crosses in here as they've done just there it's gone in and Smith has done it again here's the corner again There's the flick on, and Smith with the glancing header. A very well taken header indeed. That was a delightful header because, I mean, there was only a yard, as you can see, between the ball who flicked it on and Smith who got the touch. Very good header. Great header, Ian, but could I just give a little bit of credit there to Marwood, who actually took the two corners, because to kick a dead ball like that and put it on a sixpence like he did was exceptionally good talent, and... Uh, Obviously, this is something that other first division uh, defenders will have to watch this season. I'm glad you remember what a sixpence looks like. <laughs> well, they're chanting Alan Smith's name, and uh, he will tell you that there have been times, he hasn't been in the depth of despair, but I think there have been times when he's realised it takes an awful lot to be accepted sometimes at a football club. But. He's a very personable young man, and uh, I think Arsenal fans really will now begin to get behind him. 
lot of credit to, to as Trevor Francis was saying, to the uh, little former Sheffield Wednesday winger Brian Marwood. So Arsenal leading 2-0. Tyler, turn. Easy for Lukic. And again, the mysterious free kick's been given. Is it? Lukic doesn't know. Yes, it is a free kick. Indirect. It was actually for uh, not allowing the goalkeeper to clear the ball. Obstruction. Strikes me as a bit pedigree, actually. And it was a good guess on your part. Rokasa. Turn to Agatala. Dixon. A lot of space here for Flugler, played in first time to Bayer Schmidt. Beck to Avantala. Beckman waiting in the middle, that should be Lukic's ball. It's just now picking cherries out of a tree, that one. here for Davis now. Rocastle making good strides down that right flank. Smith looking for a hat-trick. He's waiting in the middle. Thomas. Full of fire and running still. Rocastle for Thomas. Oh, the lack of play by Thomas and the little flick that finished it off as well. Smith, they're turning on the style a bit now, Arsenal. Thomas again stopped that time though by Johnson. Olaf Thorn. Howard. Nope. Straight at McFly. Picked up easily by him. And some good tackling back by Brian Marwood. Winterburn's gone away down the left. Burn furious, silly to kick the ball away like that. But he's had a terrific game today, and one doesn't know what Kenny Sanson's future is at Highbury, but whatever it is, this man is going to be uh, shouting for the left back position, that's for sure. what we would say was a, a clear-cut chance by Nandi. Very disappointed him. 
and Luke has just hardly had a thing to do, has he? That's right, all day. They've had enough of the ball, the Germans. Uh, Trevor, you know, they, they get plenty of the ball and knock it around, but they haven't seemed to, to do anything in the vital area. In the first half, we were talking about uh, the Arsenal players looking very, very tired. Whatever George Graham said to them half time, it certainly worked because they're so, so full of running now that I think that if George said to them tomorrow there's a third game, they'd look forward to it. There's the cross. Maybe they'll make a chance here. No, Adams has snuffed that one out. But it's McFly now. by Adams has been very positive Tone felt the full force of that tackle and Dixon oh. again I'll tell you who young Dixon reminds me of well, I was thinking watching him today and uh, his style Danny Stevens ex-Everton now Glasgow Rangers very much uh, similar style hasn't he yes, I wouldn't disagree with that either. Adams has had a, a very good game at the back as well. Adams and Bold have combined really well. Winterburns look good down the left uh, side at left back, and here he is now. Things beginning to fall nicely into shape for Arsenal. As Smith goes in on that one. Martin Hayes goes in on that one and hits it well. Hayes is one of the substitutes. Another of the substitutes, incidentally, is uh, Perry Groves. There's talk in the newspapers today about he being unhappy about being left out in the first place of the squad for this tournament and wants a showdown tomorrow with uh, George Graham. George's quote to me before the game was, he's got a contract, end of story. Groves was called into the squad today and as I say he's one of the substitutes. Rowcastle. Charging on. Hayes will take it up. Here's Thomas. And looking to make another substitution. Howard. Smith. Absolutely sure, not only of this game, but of taking the trophy. Davis's shot was charged away by the keeper, and Lee Dixon made absolutely sure. A nice chest down by Alan Smith here. Got to the ball, chested it down into Davis's path. The shot off the goalkeeper, and there was Dixon. Never get an easier goal than that, but it's a nice one, isn't it? Your first goal at Wembley, and his first for the club. Yeah. thinking about bringing on a substitute and all the excitement I'm not sure whether he came or not hands need to flick this is Volfart another substitute oh, might be something opening up here for them and turn well a tremendous bit of play there and in the end nothing to show for it Well, Tom missed a glaring chance yesterday as well, didn't he? When he, he completely missed kicked the ball six yards out. And that was a great chance, but I mean, he, he did create it himself and uh, really should have done better. He should have hit, hit the ball in the net from there. Trevor? Well, I don't know if you agree, but I think in a situation like that, with all the goal at your mercy, you don't blast it like that, you yeah. just place it, put it in the corner. I think he was frustrated, just wanted to you know, sm smash the net. Well, let's have a look at it here. And we'll see it. It was a good. It was a ball played across the front of the the Arsenal defenders. He got and did really well to work the position. Uh, yeah, it was a case. I'm sure, Trevor, you'd have just slid in the corner yourself. Well, I couldn't do it yesterday, Ian. <laughs> well, on my watch, we got about two minutes left. Arsenal ready by three goals to nil. A glorious weekend it's been for them. Four against their oldest rivals yesterday, three against one of the best sides in Europe today. 
Anthony Francis reaches for the microphone, but let's first just see what Paul Davis can do here. David Rocastle. How do you say it, Charlie? I was thinking 20 minutes ago, we're talking about Arsenal uh, looking a good outfit, but uh, perhaps a little bit short up front, not able to score goals. Here we are 20 minutes later, 3 0 up. Probably George Graham will point to the substitution that he made. I think that when they've started getting the ball into the box, you know, we're making a point in the first half. If Arsenal can get the ball in the box, certainly they'll score goals, and that's for sure. Uh, and I think Mar would should just concentrate on that, you know, just slinging those, the ball in there and uh, let the follow oh. something on it. Oh, yeah. There's a nasty challenge there by Flugler. Mr. Flugler again, yes. I think the referees have been very lenient with the Germans. Had this been a, a competitive competition, I'm sure uh, he would have had a, one or two names in the book. That was really unpleasant. The Germans must be disappointed because uh, they've come here as the team that they've started the season. They've had three competitive games over their back. You know, they've passed the, the pre-season stage. And everybody said, well, their fitness will probably win it for them, but um, here we are, the Arsenal have come back from a very like, slow and jaded-looking first half to a terrific second half, played some lovely football. Looking at the Germans, and uh, they, they have made one or two changes. We're talking about Bremer and Matthias uh, leading. It's also interesting that uh, to see a, a Bayern team without Rummenigger in. Yes. Because, of course, uh, Michael Rummenigger has now moved on, and... Uh, He's great. gone to Dortmund, I think, isn't he? Well, I'm not sure who it is, but um, of course there was a great Karl Heinz before that, and uh, they've been blessed with good strikers over the last few years. Dead Hernes, of course, yeah. who's a top quality striker, and uh, they've signed no extra, and uh, they do look a little bit short up front, Brian. Well, that's bad news, you're right, Trevor. That's bad news for Arsenal, though, as David Rucastle is eased off. And they're going to bring... Uh, and bring Kevin Richardson on. It can't be long to go, Brian, surely. Well, we uh, make it about 30 seconds. <laughs> Davis with the free kick. seem to quite have the drive through the midfield that Matthias got them. Tone's a, an excellent little player, but he hasn't quite got that drive that uh, Matthias has. I think they are short of one or two players, man. Well, Arsenal certainly aren't short of anything at the moment, and certainly not short of victories. Followed up their 4-0 win over Tottenham yesterday with 3-0 today. Two of them to Alan Smith, one to Lee Dixon. To crown an excellent weekend, and also uh, helps them take the Wembley International Trophy and with it the first prize of £60,000. So George Graham, who's not gone heavily into the transfer market as others have this summer, can look back and say, so far, so good. But as he knows, and as you know, the biggest battles are yet to come.